this is some of the hypest I've seen people around Penn State football and Crazy. just the the level it could be. And, you know, it's exciting as a former player to watch because, you know, you want to see that program elevate. And, you know, I think, you know, Coach Franklin's going to do a great job. You know, we all heard it 1-0 each week. So, you know, I think, you know, when they have that mentality and just take it game by game, I think they're on the right path. Were they that bad or were we that, that good? Yeah. And I just defensively, we were we were that good. Another was it three, four plus turnover game? I believe we're number one total defense right now. Yeah. And I mean, with that formula, okay. I feel like young coaches are getting so sensitive. Like, yeah. I just, man, like everyone's trying to blow some stuff out of proportion and make some clickbait. Like, I mean, dude, Lou Holtz is going to say what he's got to say. He's on Pat Map <laughs> show. It, right. it, like, like the guy's going to say what he has to say. I think no, I don't think anyone <laughs> in their right mind challenges Ohio State's toughness over the over over what they've done consistently as a program. Like him just saying that, you know, I, I just thought it was a little fiery, man. And like, you know, yeah. I think you get that point across without calling the old guy out. You know, I mean, hell, he's a legend. Like, let him, let him be. Yeah. The question I got for you is: Do we belong in the national title and college football playoff conversation? Yo, guys, we got the merch. We have hats, shirts, hoodies, we got it all. Make sure you hit the link in the description, check it out. You guys keep buying the merch, it allows us to produce this pod and continuing to bring you guys dope content. So go check it out, make sure you tag us at State Media PSU. And when you get yours, make sure you shout us out, we'll give you a shout out online. Check it out, I'm looking forward to the support and we appreciate you guys as always. Penn State football fans. We got a real special announcement coming. We have a uh, we have an event where we are hosting the pocket live October 5th at Champs Downtown. We need all the fans there. Check out the details in the link in the description on or on State Media Social. Um, and we can't wait to see you guys there. It's gonna be awesome. Have guys chopping it up, be able to interact with us, and as always, continuing to build this community that that we're working on doing here. So Looking forward to see all you guys. Appreciate all the support. Let's keep it coming as we build this up. Make sure you check out all the details in the link in the description and under the state media bio on social media, IG, Twitter, everywhere. And looking forward to it. D, what's been going on, dude? What's going on, bro? It's good, man. Good, uh, nice rainy, cold week. Fall weather's coming, came in. Feels good to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I've been waiting on this, man. It's been like, I feel like summer's been hanging on too long, dude. Yeah, yeah, a little muggy, a little uh, too sweaty for me. So, hoodie season is here it's upon yeah. us. I'm ready. Go get your pocket hoodies out there. No Gotta doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, dude, I I thought week three, you know, like we talked about it, like week three was kind of like that always surprise, like mm -hmm. you know, splitting the season up into into quadrants or quarters. There, um, week four didn't didn't disappoint in my opinion. What was your biggest surprise week of week of this week? Man, biggest surprise of week four. There was a lot of good football this weekend. You know, a lot of people are probably say Oregon, Colorado, but that, I mean, I thought they'd put up a better fight, but I did, did have Oregon taking Colorado. Biggest surprise, man. For me, I think it would just be Notre Dame in that last play. That was, uh, that was a tough one, tough way to go out. Bro. <laughs> 10 guys? 10 guys? Ten guys, one guy on a line of scrimmage, ball on the one. <laughs> no one on the left side, right side. Crazy. Uh, that was a you know, bro. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, a lot of people, I was talking to some people, and they were kind of like still not feeling Ohio State, but I feel like that was a great game for them. The throws that kid made at the end of the game, I think confidence is going to go a long way. To um to not the um well, Mbuka, Mbuka is a, a good player but not the number one guy Martin made some Harrison. great throws yeah. Uh, yeah made some great throws and I think they're catching their stride a little bit yeah I thought Notre Dame did a good job of trying to uh, you're never going to eliminate Marvin Harrison Jr. but they made it tough and yeah. with McCord still feeling it for like his first big game under the lights, you know, mm -hmm. all that pressure going into it as, as the guy at Ohio State when you're talking about the type of quarterbacks they put out the last 15 years. Yeah. I thought 
to your point, he handled it really well, developed really well towards the end of the game. And at the end of the day, when it mattered the most, he made the plays. And uh, I, I think um, I think for them, that's, that's a big confidence boost. Because I'll tell you what, dude, you know, Jim Knowles and that defense caught some flack last year and then the year before that in terms of how physical they were and Michigan was going to – like Notre Dame came out and that – that running back they got is an absolute yeah. man child. And they yeah. may, I mean, they got, they got theirs, but, and Knowles is kind of similar to Manny in the sense that it's kind of like that blitz, you know, he's, he's very exactly. unpredictable. Like, you know, let's, let's try and make explosives on defense. But I thought, um, I thought that defense has really stepped up and that's a scary thought when, when I think that offense is only going to continue to get better. And right. that defense is finally where I think it needs to be for Ryan day to make a push. But um, and then what do you think of your, uh, your boy Day's comments post game? The old uh, no, well, well, that that's a perfect that's a perfect segue because I was going to talk about the Oregon Colorado game, man. And like, okay. I feel like them coaches are getting so sensitive. Like, yeah. I just you know, man, like everyone's trying to blow some stuff out of proportion and make some clickbait. Like, I mean, dude, Lou Holtz is going to say what he's got to say. He's on Pat Matt's <laughs> show. It, you right. know, like. Like the guy's gonna say what he has to say. I think no. I don't think anyone in their right mind challenges Ohio State's toughness over the over over what they've done consistently as a program. Like him just saying that, you know, I, I just thought it was a little fiery, man. And like, you know, yeah. I think you get that point across without calling the old guy out. You know, I mean, hell, he's a legend. Like, let him let him be. Yeah. You know, just get your point across and keep it pushing. But the same thing was with Oregon and Colorado. Like, Dan Lanning took it personal. Colorado's trying to do its thing. Dion, like, yeah. everyone. Just, to me, like, let's just <laughs> let's just line up, play ball. You get your you get your ass whooped. Like, okay. You know, yeah. nod, nah, keep it moving. I thought Dion did a good job of that after the game post yeah, did. Did. in his post game comments. But all these coaches getting all fired up and razzed yeah. up, man. You know, it's like it's getting more and more like reality TV to me. It is, and a lot of guys say, you know, ignore the noise. They don't listen to this, or they don't read this, but they do. They yeah. obviously do for sure. <laughs> for sure. And I mean, if you know, turn it into um, you know motivation for the team or whatever, maybe that's cool too. But just call it what it is. Yeah. You know, it's entertainment for us. So, yeah, at the end of the day, as long as you're putting out a good product out there, I'm going to sit back and watch it, laugh at all, laugh at it all. So, yeah, we'll but see. I thought that was a you know when you talk about Ohio State and getting over the hump and like winning those big games under Ryan Day, I thought that was that was massive because Notre Dame came in poised. Like that's a really damn good yeah. football team. Um, yeah. They both are, and I, I hope Notre Dame continues to to put that product on the field because I think the way this year is going to shape out, they'll, they'll probably have a hat in the ring and, and at least yeah. a, an argument to be in that college football playoff, as long as they handle business the rest of the year. Cause that's, that's a damn good football team. No one's going to really notch that game against them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. You know, I thought Texas looked great rebounding because that's always my question mark with Texas. You know, you go out, you win a couple big games and then, you know, you, mm. you you lay an egg against somebody. They went out and handled business against Baylor. The yep. one I want to talk to you about, because I think this is really interesting, is the Clemson Florida State mm. game. Because in my eyes, Clemson did everything that they needed to do to win that football game. Like I thought they outplayed Florida State, but Florida State just gritted it out and, you know, had a right. few things go their way and, and made it happen. Um, but Dabo Sweeney. I think is on the verge of just losing the yeah. empire that he built. <laughs> and I listen uh, to a couple talk radio shows. Zach Gelb is a, is, is a, is a guy I text with back and forth. He's had me on his no show a, lot a couple times and he had a fantastic rant about Dabo Sweeney and how much he was just praying that Florida state was going to go in there and mop him up and walk him up and down the field. Now Florida state ended up beating him. Great. But mm. they didn't beat that as Zach wanted him to. And, uh, but at the bigger scale, I'm looking at this Clemson team. I'm looking at this program. I'm looking at the way Dabo talks about NIL and the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. And I really think that he is on the verge of completely losing control of, of his dynasty that he built. Because it was a dynasty. I mean, for the last 10 years, Clemson, you know, two national championships in the playoffs, type players they've been putting out. They still got those players, but it just feels weird, man. Like they got guys at receiver that look the part, but they don't. 
make the plays that you would expect defensively. They got a yeah. ton of guys, Tarzans all over the place, and they're just not quite playing with the intensity they had when Venerables was there. What's your take on this Clemson team, man? I mean, shoot, you mentioned NIL and just everything Dabo speaks about. I mean, personally, I, I've been saying it about Penn State. The last few years it's been coming on. If you don't get on that train, it's going to leave you, man. And yeah. that's what college football is at. And – Maybe that's – maybe it's more of an internal, you know, um, we talk about the first episode, second episode, the quarterback room. Maybe that locker room just isn't clicking, you know. We talk about how important that is for every team at any level. And as you said, they have the athleticism. They have the pieces, but just not quite hitting on all cylinders as we're used to. Yeah. And as we see, the ACC is getting a little stronger. Florida State is back, Miami. you know. they Miami, Clemson isn't just going to run the table every year. So yeah. definitely got to figure out. I still think it's it's early, you know. I think they have the talent, but we'll see what, what they can make shape towards the, the end stretch of the season. Yeah, I mean, North Carolina is a wild card. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, dude, it's – uh. It's going to be interesting. They don't. They don't. They definitely don't have the silver platter that they have had just yeah. working in the ACC. And I was. It's funny. My little brother played baseball there. I was talking to him today about it. Right. And he's like, "Dude, when we when I was there, like, I left every single football game at halftime because we were up forty five to like seven, right. five to three. Right. We, we, we were like out of there at halftime. And he goes, "Now he's like, it's just so such a different game to watch, man. He's he's you know he, he played football in high school, so he's a football guy. Mm-hmm. Like it's so hard to watch." Um, yeah, and I can't I can't put my finger on it because it's not just all the, the QB. You can't just put it on him. And he's, yeah. he, he's doing well. I mean, it's his first year starting as well. I, mean, I guess he started the last in the last season, but it's not that they have a strong running game. That's maybe that's where they've been kind of lacking a little bit. You know, well, their O line the was really bad when DJ was there. Like not bad. They just yeah. Well, yeah, it was bad. I'm just going to call it <laughs> And they, they couldn't run the football. And then I think that they put a little bit of depth in that. But that's where I go back to the transfer portal, man. It's like Dabo has fought that. And it's like you're at a place like Clemson, dude. Like I don't know if you've – I've been there a couple times. Like I don't know if you've been no, there. Never. Clemson is sick. Like I compare it to like a southern Penn State. It's a college town. Mm. Everything's built around the town. Um, beautiful facilities are sick. State of the art. Yeah, I've heard and it's like, if you got a problem, bro, like, go handle it, and you're selling a top-notch facility. Like, you could go to any co- any 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 program in the country and be like, I want you to come to Clemson, and you're going to start next year. And if you're, yeah. you're a guy who's, you know, a rotational guy or even a guy who played on a bad team who's a really good player, mm-hmm. like, you can come and compete for the ACC championship and the national championship because we've done it before. Like, I don't know why you would fight that. I know, I, maybe if it's he's just so stuck on his development and like if he doesn't pride is a double. The locker room, but it seems like the locker room's disrupted, like you said. Yeah, yeah, pride is a devil, man. We'll see. He's gonna, yeah. like I said, they don't get on that train, it will leave you. <laughs> yeah, no, and then and then Michigan was in a little bit of a tussle with Rutgers early, but they ended up pulling it out. Um, I thought they looked great, and and ultimately, I think shaping out the Big Ten, you know, those three teams right now are. Leaps and bounds above everybody else. Um, and I think that's a perfect segue to get us in the pocket with Christian Hackenberg and Brad, my guy. So um, talking it, t- shifting it back full time. Let's let's go to what we're here, right? Feels like 86, dude. Got the shirt on. Ooh, <laughs> oh, shoot. I like that. Bro. And I, I yeah, <laughs> don't know what it was like probably for 86. <laughs> They're probably listening that know what that's like, but – <laughs> um, you know, the whiteout game against an Iowa team, top 25 team, they were ranked, you know, we could say whatever they did up into that point to get there. They definitely didn't look like it. 76 yards of offense or something like that. And, you know, we pretty much did what we needed to do on, on, on offense against their defense, which was their strong point. So yeah. um, thoughts on the game, you know, sloppy, a little bit of weather in there. Um, yep. that standpoint, but what are, what are your thoughts on the game on the defensive side? We'll start there because that's, that's, that's your side, man, and, uh, man. It was a, it was a fun sight to see, man. Those guys were flying around and just to get to, I don't want to get to the mailbag too early, but I know I saw one of the comments was, were they that bad or are we that, that good? Yeah. And I just defensively, we were, we were that good. Yeah. Uh, Saturday night, 
you know, holding any power five team to that amount of yards, that little amount of yards is astonishing. Another was a three, four plus turnover game. I believe we're number one total defense right now. Yeah. And I mean, with that formula mixed with a, I don't want to say a high powered offense, although we have the capabilities, but a, a, a very functioning, you know, methodical, know what they want to do offense. And then still, I think it has a lot of more pieces to put together on that end. But defensively, I was super proud. That's and a goose egg. A goose egg at the end of the night, man. That is any defensive player's dream. You know, it's always hate when we got a goose egg and then, you know, two threes are in at the end of the game and then they let up a six or a seven, uh, mm-hmm. seven points. And it's like, damn, we could have had a goose egg because that, that changes things. That looks good on the stat sheet. It does look good. And and to your point, you know, however you however you want to cut the cake, like whether whether Iowa was that bad, I I, I think they they were, but also equally, I think our our defense was that good. Yeah. Too. And I thought that they showed a lot of grit. Iowa's not a not physical football team. Like they're, they're Never. still going to be a physical Never. football team, and they're going to come in. And yeah, they were down a back, two backs, and and, and yeah, they were banged up. But like, I don't think they're thirty one points, and and you know another 300 yards of offense good um so the way that that team flew around also held them up you know got them in third down after the first drive the first drive they they got a couple first downs on some medium to long third downs i I was i was sitting there watching i was like damn like these guys gotta get off the field um then they get the fumble and then and then it just snowballed from there. It was like they couldn't get right. The stadium erupted. I I, I mean, (laughs) we go back to this, dude, but, like, I really do think that that is such an advantage that I didn't even take for granted when I was up there. And Because, I mean, I didn't really pay attention. After I came off the field, I was, like, you know, talking through things, whatever. But that's got to be, like, so freaking hard, man. I mean, timeouts, stuff like that. So I think the whole atmosphere helped, um, and the defense fed off it. And I thought that offensively, they there's a couple drives that kind of stalled out with some head scratchers. But overall, when they got a short field, they took advantage of it for the most part. Got got points out of it. Tight end room looked great again. I think Tyler Ward, yeah. who's stud man, that kid is. Yeah. He's, he's a mismatch problem. He's physical too. Like that. Jack Army knife. Dude, he he Push is. Army knife. Yeah, he is. He's but he's a complete tight end. Like most no, tight yeah, I, nowadays, just want to go out there and catch touchdowns. Like right. He ain't afraid to put his hand in the dirt, put his face mask in your chin, and 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 be yeah. a player. Even when he's running routes, he's physical. Um, Shoot, I mean, he's that's a typical Iowa tight end, which I'm glad. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. we can kind of start taking that reign from those guys. They got a lot of great pros, but yeah, definitely, he's the whole package. Yeah. So offensively, I mean, you know, bread and butter backs look great again. Um, we're explosive. It's. It's funny because I think everyone looks at the Ohio State offense of the past few years, and it's weird because Ohio State's in that transition where they're not quite as explosive yeah. as what they used to be. They are, but they're not in terms of consistently doing it. And uh, Michigan has gone more to that methodical, like, run game type of style. Mm-hmm. When I watch us play, I, I see a lot of Michigan in us, yeah. probably due to the fact that, you know, both programs have four of probably the best running backs in college football two quarterbacks who are very, very efficient, know what to do, are explosive in their own ways as well. Um, yeah. That 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 caused some points of differentiation. And then when you're looking outside the box at the receiver position, you know, Michigan's got a couple guys that can make plays. We do as well. And then I think our, our biggest differentiator is probably in the tight end room where yeah, I know Michigan has good players, but we are three, four deep. Got athletes. And and it's it's really fun to see our transition and kind of how we started to mirror that side of things with with Michigan and compete with them. So when you're looking at the big three, I think it's gonna be really unique when these matchups come up. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun to watch, man. And then as you were speaking on the environment, I guess that's something you don't really could never really even pay attention not pay attention to, but really indulging because you're on offense. You guys yeah. are kind of quiet in the crowd down. Yeah. You know, you're out there on defense. We feel that. That's the yeah. part that got me up on Saturday mornings. Like, just that. It makes my skin tingle right now. You know, I was known to jump around, especially when the music's rocking. Third down, they drop a ball, false start. It's like, it, it reminds me of, like, an old high school basketball rowdiness. Like, 
Yeah, you know, yeah. fans start chirp. Our fans don't chirp, but like when you just feel that on the court, on the field, yeah, you just feel like you can go dunk on someone or something. No doubt. <laughs> it. I mean, I, again, you know, I, I wasn't up there. I missed it. I probably a good thing with my kid and. Uh, yeah, it was nasty. <laughs> the weather, seven thirty kickoff, way past his bedtime. But um, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it in the basement for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of shifting gears now. You know, we I touched on it a little bit. You know, talking about Michigan and Ohio State, but um, you know, big picture now, right? We've we mentioned it. We're four weeks in. Um, I think we're starting to see some things. Um in terms of statistical relevance show up when you're, when we're watching tape, seeing teams, who they are, how they do things. Um, you're starting to see teams fi- form identities, right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the question I got for you is, do we belong in the national title and college football playoff conversation? hundred percent. Come on now. I've been drinking the juice from early. I know. You know you I, 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 I saw you it up now though. What'd you say? I said, I want you to back this up now, though. You, you, oh, you, yeah. I geez, mean, bro. Anyone can come in there and drink the juice. That's you true. That's true. Things, you can catch yourself in the bathroom, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but look, everything everything we just said about Clemson, right? Yeah. About having the talent and the, the depth and everything, but not quite putting it all together. I think we're the opposite, you know? And we are at that point where we have the talent at every position, the depth at every position, and we're putting it all together on the field, which is a testament, to obviously, to the whole program, the coaches, the the uh, the build up throughout the week, the preparation. And when you see that, from my p- perspective, I believe we deserve a show. Or we'll see how it shakes, but I believe we're in that contention right now. You know, we're not quite. What are we? They bumped us up one spot, yeah. but we know a lot of time left for the, for those games to shake. But Ohio State had a big one. There's some, there's some yeah. up there that that. Re, you know, reasonably in terms of rankings and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. But confidently, confidently, the most confident I've ever been, I could, I want, I, I can see us taking on any opponent. Anyone above us, top six or top five, I can see us winning, winning the, that game. Yeah. I guess the one thing that I, and even, and this is not taking anything away from that 2016 team, um, but like, when I compare this team to previous Penn State teams and when I'm looking at a team and I say, can, can they compete at that level? It, what, it, what it comes down to is, is when you're at your worst, where do you stack up, right? And yeah. I, we haven't really seen Penn State at their worst, right? Like right. I guess you could say the Illinois game wasn't the greatest showing. But <clears throat> to your point, when depth, talent, Um, coaching schemes and things like that still take over the game and put you in positions to win it, even when you're not clicking on all cylinders and looking great and looking clean. Cause that's going to happen, dude. Like you're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids playing a long season. Like those things are going to happen. And when you're at your worst, can you still compete? Um, I think that this team to your point is poised top to bottom depth wise schematically from a coaching staff standpoint, um, and then also that energy factor that you were talking about. I think the program believes in it. They're they're drinking the juice as well um, in their own individual ways in terms of getting the job done. And that's what gives me uh, not that's what gives me confidence in mm-hmm. heading into the horseshoe in three weeks. I think it's in three weeks because you got the bye week. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, in three weeks. And and being able for that to be a marquee matchup, college game day type of thing, and it ultimately is going to impact who is or be part of an impact of who is going to represent the Big Ten in the college football playoff. Because we've, I think we've already established that that's that's if you win the Big Ten, you're in it. You're right, in the dance. Right. And even if it's a good year and you don't win the Big Ten, you could possibly get in the dance, depending upon what else happens. So, um, I like this. Maybe like one of those football. years. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. It might be. It might be. Um, especially with how the SEC is shaking out. It might be. You got a, got a one loss. Um, Bama already. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. they, they kind of got the thing rolling a little bit this past week against Ole Miss, but if they drop another one, I think that's safe to say that's kind of – they're out of it. They but still we'll got see. LSU, you know. Mm-hmm. LSU looks looks pretty good. So there's there's a lot that, that 
and there's still a lot of games left, but yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. I think what Penn State has put on the field this year up until this point, best top end, I don't even think they've really quite scratched that yet. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that's the and, scary part. Yeah, and then low end, like, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Like, right. defense keeps turning it over like the way they have been and forcing turnovers and creating explosives, and the offense keeps taking care of it and facilitating and, you know, going into each game with different game plans, finding the mismatches and getting guys going and, and being confident in it. And Drew keeps playing the way he's been playing. Yeah. You know, we, we're we going to have a chance. And yeah. uh, I think the, the conversation is no longer does Penn State belong. The conversation is when they get their chance, are they going to continue to show what they've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so shifting that, right, we talked about the defense and the mentality. The second question I got for you from a big picture standpoint okay. is – um, and let me explain this. Does this mm-hmm. defense have enough stamina for 14, 15 games, especially on the interior seven, right? When you're talking about possibly your last four games of the season being against mm-hmm. the winner of the West, um, a college football playoff contender in the national championship, like your, your three, four games of the season are going to be brutal, in terms of yeah. physicality, and you're going to have to survive a Michigan and, a, and an Ohio State game. Um, do we have the longevity, right? Like, we're living and dying by the three ball right now. We're getting short fields. There's going to be some games where we maybe don't create those turnovers, right? Do we have the stamina and, and long-term stability, uh, specifically on in the interior part of that defense, to go out and, and, and play a 14-15 game season at the level that we're playing right now? Yeah. I mean, obviously, bearing health, which uh, God willing, yeah, guys stay healthy. But you know, I think with the depth that we have, you know, we've we've always rotated D line. You kind of have to do that. No one plays the whole game, really. But we talked about it before; those bigger bodies, maybe playing majority of the game that we're used to. I think with the depth that they have right now, and sometimes as a player, I know as a linebacker, I hated coming out. It's like I need to almost like a running back. I need to get right. my the feel of the game. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I noticed that for the last few years, they rotate a lot. And, obviously, for me, like I said, I'm not a big fan of that from that perspective. But from the freshness perspective that we're talking about, it is good. It is good, especially for the interior right there. Keep those guys firing off the ball, getting um, hitting those creases and the blitzes that we do and the pressure packages because there's no – I think there's, there's no alternative. There's almost have no choice but to uh, kind of survive those because we know the game plan. It's not like it's going to switch up. It's not going to be any two gapping going on. It's going to be firing off the ball, firing off the ball, trying to uh, penetrate the backfield. Yeah. And to your point, those guys have gotten a lot of reps. Your two and three yeah. on the yeah. depth chart have gotten a lot of reps up to this point. So when you're talking about rotating guys, there's not going to be a drop off. They're, yeah. they're going to be able to be in it and they're going to be able to see what they're seeing. And, and yeah. I think I think those are very astute points and and take notes, fans. That's that's good yeah. stuff from D Bell. And honestly, similar to what you said about the offense, there's a lot of room for improvement defensively. I think too. I still don't think we're uh, scratching the surface. We're seeing the turnovers come in now because the linebackers are playing a little faster, a little more confident. The D line we keep harping on. These guys have a lot of room for Pretty improvement. Strict. I can. What did you say? Had three strip sacks this weekend. Three strip sacks. These guys are going for the ball. They're getting back there. Chop Robinson's starting to come alive. Adidas is starting to come alive. They got these young guys. Uh, Dennis Sutton starting to come alive pass rush-wise. And they have to keep, you know, lowering the pad level. That's one thing I noticed a little bit. Get a little high because they're firing off almost like a track sprint every time. But yeah, I think the, the room for improvement up front, I still think, will be. Uh, will stand the test of time throughout the end of the season. Linebackers as well. The DBs, honestly, they've been they've been spectacular. I have nothing to say about those guys. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so. so let's so let's assume that Penn State continues to handle business, right? They got that bye week coming up after Northwestern. Um, then they have the Brenneman Bowl. Sorry, I screwed that up. The then Brenneman, they Brenneman Bowl. Bowl against <laughs> And then they go to the shoe, right? So Assume they handle business. Um, very early things to watch for that matchup in Columbus because you noted that that Ohio State team looked really good against a really, really good Notre Dame team. Um, I don't think we've been tested to that point 
and we're not yeah. going to be coming into that. Um, what are some early things to watch on the defensive side of the ball when you're talking defensive about, when you're talking about Ohio State's offense? What type of problems they can present? Yeah, defensive side of the ball. I think I'm quite confident they're going to hit the ground running with the run game. You know, they're going to try to little boy us what they, uh, you know, get real physical and mm-hmm. lean on us with their the massive old line that they have. What you say? Be tough. Yeah, be tough, be physical, all that uh, hoopla. But, <laughs> I mean, honestly, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Everything we keep talking about, you know, young quarterback, first year starting, let's take the pressure off him. If we can rip off three, four, five yards of pop, let's keep doing that. So that would be number one. But we're going to have to keep making those splash plays, knock them off track every now and then. And then number two, I would say, is man coverage, man. When it comes to these big three games or the big two games, the big three teams, it's man coverage. What does Ohio State and Michigan always do? They walk up in your face outside and tell you to try to get open. You know, do you think we can do that with Marvin Harrison Jr. for four quarters? I think we'll, we'll be selective. I'm not saying every play, but I think – to affect the quarterback, get pressure. As we know, we're going to send the pressure. Yeah. I think that would be the best bet because I think he's hitting his stride. He can find the holes in his zone. If he's if he, if he's comfortable back there, he can make those throws. And obviously, they got weapons that know how to find the holes. Brian Hartline yeah. keeps a stable receiver. They're smart, they're fast, they're physical, all that. The so I think we're going to have to match that. It's tight end. The tight end's a stud, too. I'd be, Stover, watching, yeah. I'd be watching our linebackers and safeties with him because that's that kid, yeah. that kid's good. Yeah. I mean, I think our strongest core right now would be the defensive backs. I mean, there's a good six guys that are out there balling, seven guys maybe, getting a lot of tick, a lot of experience, and we're going to have to match that physicality and speed on the outside. Second yeah. to stop and run. I think we're also going to have to create a couple turnovers. Yeah, like, oh, I think yeah, we have sure. to keep on that train, right? Like, yeah. Otherwise, I think you're going to see a game very similar to this Notre Dame game. Just tough down to them. Just tough, tough, tough. Grind it out. You're going to be sitting there like, man, can someone make an explosive? Right. Because offensively, like watching this Ohio State defense again, it, what bodes well is that Penn State has a very aggressive defensive coordinator in Manny Diaz, very similar to Jim Knowles. So I think. It's going to be a lot of retro, like retroactive going back to training camp and, and seeing all kinds of different exotics and things like that and pressure coming from all over the place. I think that would bode well for Penn State um, yeah. and Drew. Like less script, more like let's start seeing stuff, react, like maybe some one versus one type work throughout that week. Mm-hmm. It would be really good. But I think it's going to be obviously super imperative for Drew to continue to take care of the football. Um, I think he's going to be, he's going to need to make. And, and, and I don't want to take anything away from this. I don't think he needed – like, he made plays against Iowa this week that were fantastic, yeah. but I don't think he necessarily needed to make those plays for us to win that ball game. Right, right, right. When we go to Columbus, he's going to need to make five to ten plays that are going to win or lose the ball game for us. So I think continuing to grow his confidence heading into that throughout these three weeks, including a bye week, that's going to be good. And I think some of that focus is going to be on Ohio State. You know, one and zero and all that BS. Some of that focus is going yeah. to be on Ohio State. Um, yeah. And uh, I think just really start grooming that. And we have to continue to be able to run the football. If we cannot yeah. run the football and creatively figure out ways, even if Ohio State's loading the box and challenging us outside one on one, we have to figure out ways how to how to create some type of thought process so those so that D line can't pin their ears back because they're they're very good as you know yeah. LJ out there has always had guys yeah, yeah. get some, <laughs> some rolling. Yeah and I think uh just going hand in hand what you said about Drew making those five to ten plays, it's gonna be those guys on the outside, the tight ends that we keep talking about and the receivers. Yeah. Tight ends we're pretty we're I think we're all hundred percent confident that yeah. they'll make the plays when they present <clears> themselves. I think there's going to be some stuff like we talked about, some strategic holding of the cards for that game that Yursich is going to do. And I, I think it's going to be uh, – it's going to have to be a master class from, yeah. a, from a coaching standpoint, right? Like I think yeah. you look at the rosters on paper, it's, it's pretty – you know, you're, you're playing – all Madden 98 versus all Madden 99. <laughs> you got, you got yeah. the Jimmy's and Joe's. I yeah. think it's going to be a master class coming down to coaching and, and can 
can Yersic win the battle against Knowles and can mm. Manny get Hartline and, and Ryan Day on their heels um, yeah. and create some chaos. And speaking on the whiteout, we have the Grant Haley here, former teammate of ours, great cornerback, and just a great all-around guy. Whiteout legend, as we know. My guy, how you doing, brother? I'm good, boys. It's good to see y'all. I hope everything's going well. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, bro, Mr. Whiteout himself, dude. We couldn't, we couldn't not, we couldn't not call you on here and get you, get you, get you some FaceTime, man. No, uh, yeah. I got it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was good to see you. See you were up there, you know, getting, you know, fully indulged in the the culture, as you know, you're very familiar with. Had your baby girl up there in the family. How's that? New father? How's that been going? It, it was a blessing, man. It's always good to come back to a place like Penn State. It's basically home for, you know, all of us that we know. And just being able to bring, you know, my kin up there and just kind of, I mean, obviously she doesn't know what's going on, but it was so beautiful just, you know, seeing where her mom and dad met and, you know, getting to see her meet the coaches and everything. And, you know, it's just such an honor and privilege to be, you know, be a honorary captain this past weekend. And, you know, obviously there's no environment like the whiteout. So that was really special and near and dear to my heart, man. Yeah. Grant, the first time I met you was uh, – well, not the first time I met you, but the first time we got to sit down and talk. I think you were on a recruiting visit because your mom's a Penn Stater, correct? She is, yeah. She graduated in oh, – shoot, I'm not going to give her age out there, but yeah, around in the early mom. 80s, early 80s. You that to your mom. <laughs> um, but uh, we, sit, we were sitting down at a training table just talking, chopping it up, man, and I, I, I'm always impressed with the with the mentality you had and the way you approached the game and the way you approached that whole process and uh, your great representation of the program. So um, fortunate we got to share the locker room for a little bit and like i said you went, you went you went out there and made a name for yourself and did your own thing so we're all proud of you bro um no, i appreciate you boys with that you know you talked about talked about the experience the white out you know all, all the all the uh all the all the pageantry but um what'd you think yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what'd you what'd you think about um what'd you think about the game obviously it was a great performance top to bottom on our side. But what do you think about the game? What do you think about the team so far, you know, four weeks in? It's still it's still a little early, but <clears throat> there's a lot of expectations and hype around this around around this squad right now. So give me give me your your diagnosis. You know, I mean, there's definitely some expectations. I mean, this is shoot, this is some of the hypest I've seen people around Penn State football and Crazy. just the the level it could be. And, you know, it's exciting as a former player to watch because you know, you want to see that program elevate. And, you know, I think, you know, Coach Franklin's going to do a great job. You know, we all heard it one and know each week. So, you know, I think, you know, when they have that mentality and just take it game by game, I think they're on the right path. And just overall, I mean, the defense, I mean, they look outstanding. I mean, they got guys flying around the ball, turnovers. You know, it's it's really impressive, you know. Um, and then offense, I've been so impressed by Drew Allard just coming in and just the poise he's shown, you know, obviously he's a high recruit, you know, everyone's anticipating him to, you know, be successful, but I think, you know, he's, he's kept a level head and he's got the, he's got the right mentality to keep, uh, keep going day by day and week by week and leading that team, you know, towards, you know, whatever the goal is. And we all know that big 10 championship and, you know, whatever's beyond. Yeah. We got to get over that hump. Yeah, definitely. got to get there. Is anyone, uh, well, besides Drew, you mentioned Drew, who's stuck out to you on defense? Anyone? I, th- you guys? I think, you know, just being as a DB, I think Kalen King and Johnny Dixon, I've loved, you know, watching them play, you know, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Coach Smith's my guy, so I got to give them a shout out. You know, I think oh. he's, he's been doing a great, great job just recruiting corners, developing corners, obviously, you know, we all know the impact he has on, on Penn State, just, just from his, you know, career at Penn State, but as a coach, man, I just want to give him his flowers for that and, you know, obviously on the linebacker side, I've been impressed by Abdul Carter. I mean, you know, those those guys that wear number 11, they're special, man. <laughs> well, so I, I'll tell you what, um, B, B hasn't been able to not stop talking about the defensive backs and that secondary. Um, it's a point he brings up every show. And you, you mentioned it a little bit, but I think that that room has always – I mean, really, since since even I was there, that's, that's always been a deep room. We've always had talent. You were obviously yeah. a part of that. But specifically pertaining to this year and the two obstacles that we got to get over 
and you know, I'm, I'm stepping out of the one and zero mentality right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm saying when you, when you're going against the Ohio States of the world and you're going against now Michigan and, and what they've grown into as a program, that defensive backfield, I personally feel is going to be a major, major key more so than any game up until this point, just due to the fact that uh, both of those programs have weapons outside and from a, mismatch got to have it type of mentality and the way Manny calls games. I think that that's, that's going to be a pivotal point, some type of matchup, whether it's a third and eight or first and 10, they want to go after them. It's going to be a pivotal point in those types of games. Cause those games are won and lost by two or three plays. How do you think that that group's a tooled for that? And let's, let's maybe focus on Ohio state just because of the weapons that they have. And then um, B maybe give a little insight into coach small uh, coach, coach, uh, uh, Terry Smith, <laughs> T. Smalls, and uh, what what his approach might be uh, heading into a week like Ohio State. You know, I think Coach Smith's just going to have them focused, ready, and just be aggressive. You know, I think that's what the the main goal is. Don't back down from any challenge. You know, you know, obviously they have a very talented receiver and Marvin Harrison Jr. But, you know, I think that's a that's a challenge and a chip on your shoulder to go out there and compete. And like you said, you know, the way, you know, Manny Diaz calls plays, you know, it's going to be a situation where we're going to need them to step up and make that big play. And so I think, you know, the way they've been handling their business right now, I think they're only gaining confidence going into Ohio State, going into games like Michigan where, you know, their back's going to be against the wall and they're going to have to show out and, you know, show who they are as as players. Because this is not just the opportunity to go against the top, you know, top five NFL draft pick next year. This is a time for them to make their name, you know, for people who don't know who they are. So I think it's – it's uh, Coach Smith's already putting it in their head mentally. It's just like you guys are – you guys realize what you're doing out there on the field. You guys are a great unit, a great group of guys. So don't don't just stray from a challenge. Just go head on and, you know, go collide that challenge. Mm. Word. I'm glad you <laughs> mentioned uh, mentality. That's what I was going to ask you. I say it every week, confidence in college football, especially at your position, cornerback. You know, you guys come in all different shapes and sizes. Can you speak on just like what level of confidence do you really have to have to be a corner at Penn State, a starter, a, you know, out there making plays, game-changing plays, what's the mentality going into that? I think as a DB, for real, in general, you just got to have that next play mentality, whether they catch a ball or not. You know, it's just like, forget it. You just got to move on. And, you know, especially in big-time moments like that, you know, they're great players. So you're going to have to get back up and, and strap up. You know, I think for – I think for me personally, it's just it's a it's a challenge as you know, like you say, we come in all shapes and sizes. So, you know, for me going against bigger guys like I, I love doing that because it's just it's it grows my game and makes me feel stronger as a as a player. And, you know, when they go out there and maybe they're smaller, maybe they're faster, maybe it is what it is. But, you know, I think uh I think that's why, you know, college football is special. You know, you get to see people perform in the spotlight against people you, you know, are eventually playing in the NFL. And that's the games where you make a name for yourself because, you know, they go out there and they strap some of the best receivers in the in the country. Then, you know, that you already know their draft stock and their future is rising. And that confidence piece going back on that, just like when you're in the groove, you almost got to think like they're out to they're against you, you know, like everybody is down on you. It's like a mentality, just like Personal. they don't want, right. They don't want me to win. I know we also would like Tom Brady said, like, like, you're not my friend. Like the only people, my friends, like on my teammates, like that's kind of like, that's the mentality you got to have when you're out there. Respect it. I respect it. Yeah. So heading into Northwestern right now, we'll go back to one and no mentality heading into Northwestern. That's a, that's a program that's kind of in some turmoil with, with uh, Pat, Pat leaving before the year and they came off a big win this weekend. Um, yeah. I'm from behind, but uh, let's talk about transitioning from the atmosphere, because I think that's mm-hmm. probably going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest change for this team. I think they probably got a little taste of it at Illinois, but I think Northwestern in terms of an atmosphere is even, even on a different scale than that. There, it's, it's, and it's not knocking them. It's just what it is, right? It's a, it's a, it's, it's a high school. school. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crash. <laughs> yeah, Coach Franklin's on his whole no music in the weight room, right. no <laughs> practice, whole bring your own juice <laughs> mentality. That's I hated those weeks personally. Yeah. So so heading into that, you know, what 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 do we got to overcome from that side of things? And then if you got anything to add from an on the field standpoint, what you're looking for this week, let's let's hear it. Yeah, I'm I'm to be honest, I'm looking for just like you said, just the change of atmosphere. Like how do you respond to playing uh, in front of like we honest, like the best environment in college football to a an eleven o'clock start, you know, in Chicago, you know. So it, it's it's gonna be different. And I feel like you know, like B-Bell said, like the no music, it, it may really seem like that when they're out there, but just to have the the mental fortitude to go out there and forget the opponent, forget the time, forget the crowd, and just play your game. You know, you guys are playing a great game right now, offensive, defensively, and just doing the right things that they've been continuously doing. I feel like they've um, progressed each week and you know, it, like you said, they got a taste of it in Illinois. So this isn't this isn't the first time they're going to be able to understand that the atmosphere is going to be completely different, and they're going to have to respond in a way and show out. And obviously, you know, I do think they'll they'll get it done. And you know, I got complete and utter, utmost faith. But you know, just start fast and finish strong. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. No yes, doubt. sir. Most definitely one and zero mentality, as you said. Uh, appreciate you coming on, dropping some gems, and before you leave us. Could you could you give us sum up your Penn State, you know, career time at Penn State experience in one word or phrase, whatever? How would you how would you explain it? Got him, bro. You got, yeah, him. You got me right there. Yeah, I, I was good. So you got me right there. Um, one word, one phrase, I think. Hmm. I think for me, it's just like being able to truly understand and appreciate the history and tradition Penn State has, you know, you know, growing up in the South, you know, I always was SEC football, SEC football. And, you know, obviously my mom went to Penn State and she's diehard Penn State, Joe Paul all the way. So, you know, I was always like, I'm not going to my mom's alma mater, my, you know, so. But when I finally got there and just having people like Coach Smith in the room just you know, tell me the history of Penn State, like, it, it's so prideful. And, you know, even every single time I go back and just, like, it makes me feel at home. So I think just me being able to have the experience of truly understanding what it means to be a Penn Stater, what it means to be a Penn State football player, I think that's truly what was special. It's beautiful. You're, you're a big piece of that history, my brother. Big piece yeah, of that. I mean, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. And, I mean, shoot, we all are, and, you know, yeah. we all – helped you know get this climb started and obviously you know we're so proud of them and just want them to keep going and you know like we said make that leap sure boom thank you appreciate you grant appreciate y'all boys yes sir grant haley appreciate it you'll definitely be back gotta pull up on us again and um be safe out there keep grinding i know you uh still hustling still trying to get to it so best of luck with that too and thank you. Uh, we'll see you bro Appreciate y'all. Dude, I love talking to Drop. You guys are the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's my guy, man. As you said from the top, ton of respect. That's a dog out there. Remember me and him being out there to that strong side of the field when I was an outside linebacker. Dude. Versatile, athletic guy, man. Corn start, started off as a corner, came back to safety, hit you in the mouth, can stick to you like glue. Mm-hmm. Did it all, and that's why he was, uh, had a good NFL career. World champion, as you said, man, 2 P. That is one of the funniest dudes uh, you ever meet, for sure. Dude, one of the best <laughs> locker room guys, man. Yeah. I don't even want to – like you said, he's a fantastic player. Loved, loved New Yorker. my practice. Loved having him on my team when he was on the other side of the ball. But, like, one of the best locker room guys there ever was. So, yeah, I'm happy for him. He's doing great up there. Um, Mailbag. Let's get to it. You dropped a great mailbag video out in the elements. I love it. Um, <laughs> got to keep the fans going. Got to keep the engagement where it's at. And uh, appreciate it. much appreciated, man. Yeah, bro. I, I um, like I said, dude. I, I this is one of my favorite segments. Just getting getting really people is. going, <laughs> getting their opinions on some stuff, and uh, seeing seeing where they're at, seeing where their minds are at, answering some questions. Yeah. Um, so with that, let's go to my guy, Kev, uh, at to Kevin. Um, he shot us a note 
and I'm going to let you go with this because you were you were okay. part of one of these teams, and then you know closer to this team than I was. And but I do have some questions. I do have some remarks here. What jumps out more about this 2023 team than maybe the 2016 or 2017 Penn State teams? I would say, at least definitely going back to 2016, is just the the. I mean trying to give a better answer, but the depth at every position. As Matt, you said it perfectly. Our worst that year, I mean, you saw it. Yeah, you lost the pit. It was, yeah, it was teams yeah. that we should have be, and there was teams we got spanked up on mm-hmm. um, by. So that was our worst. And I think exactly like you said, our worst, we haven't, we haven't seen it yet, but I'm confident that our struggle games, hopefully when they don't come, maybe they already came in the top of Illinois and things like that, that we have an answer and the talent and the depth to figure it out. And I don't know what that looks like. You know, every game is different. Yeah. Maybe maybe we're, we're not running the ball that well, and Drew has to drop back and put the game on his back. Then Drew and the receivers have to go out there and make tough catches, tough throws. I'm confident that we'll be able to do that mm-hmm. at every position, no matter what the scenario is, even the D-line. I'm confident in those guys to, within the scheme, get pressure and cause havoc and – uh you know, slow up teams enough to, to make plays. Yeah. I, um, I echo that. And like I said this before, um, like just, just a very tangible example, right? Like Saquon was a phenomenal player. I'm not taking right. anything away from two sex. One of my favorite guys, like generational talent, right? It's kind of impossible to take anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But like, what I'm saying is, is when you look at our identity, that in 2016 and our identity in 2023, we have two backs who are fantastic talents and we can turn around and run the football at will. Saquon created an ass pile of explosives. He was a very explosive player, but there were a lot of times where Saquon got corralled for one negative, you know, like you were behind the sticks and Trace had to put something on his back and he had to get creative. And then Joe Mo had to figure out a way how to get back on schedule like this team has the ability to just the 2023 team I'm talking about to yeah. stay on schedule all day long and move the yeah. ball methodically down the field with the explosive ability that the 2016 team had. And I think that identity and owning that identity is the biggest difference on top of all the points that you made. I think it, I think those are, yeah. that's just a very tangible example. Like two six on this football team would be very scary. And I've said Stupid. it like imagine two six at Wisconsin <laughs> Like, right, right. He'd have had I'll the best college football career of all time as a running back. I yeah. Think. Like, just yeah. phenomenal. Um, People always compared him to Zeke, and I always said, I mean, hey, if you put – flip flip both players. You put Zeke on our team and him on their team, who would be the better player? That's the answer. Yeah. That's and the answer. The, you and I both know the answer. <laughs> yeah. And I like Zeke. Actually, one more – yeah, yeah. I was, that was the best player I ever played against. I always <laughs> said One more point to that just to a confidence in our team, especially the offense. Yeah. Third downs compared to 2016, I'm not holding my breath as much as I may have as a fan then. You know, yeah. third and seven came up because, you know, negative two-yard run or whatever it may be, and it'll still happen. But third and seven comes up now, I'm not holding my breath as much. You know, not that we've been perfect on third down. We definitely haven't. But I'm a little bit more like, okay, we'll – We'll have an answer here. Yeah, we got And it won't be some miraculous play by 2-6, juking 15 people and taking it for eight yards. Yeah, or nine being super gritty on the drop back. Like, yeah. It'll yeah. actually be within the system. Yeah, exactly. We'll the ability to beat people within a system and then also outside of the system if we need to this year. Right. Um, that's a good answer. Kevin, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, that's a good question. Good question. Um, let's jump to my guy, Chris. Uh, at C Will Man Bunge, if I, if I messed that up, I'm sorry. Um, he says, went to my first ever whiteout, y'all, and it was a blast. Tons of emojis. Big emoji guy. I um, <laughs> think this defense is capable of stepping up yet again and getting us to the Big Ten Championship this year, maybe even a potential college football playoff spot, or do you think we have a ways to go? We touched on this, but I think we can allow Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, go ahead, B. I think we can step up, and I, I only thing I'll say is that it probably won't look like whatever you may think it will look like. 
because I think there's so many guys that have experience and are just confident. Any one of these guys can make a play. It yep. could be a two because they're rotating a whole bunch, maybe not a starter. Comes in and makes a big play. I think they're all poised to do that. They're confident enough to do that, and they have the preparation to do just that. So I don't know what it'll look. Maybe it's – you know, maybe we still give up yards and scores. You know, maybe it's a shootout game down to the end. Maybe it's, like you said, a Notre Dame, Ohio State, but it's 20-plus more points for each team. But it still comes down to the end. Some, someone, I believe, can make a play because they practice it and they have the talent to do so at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I'll echo all that. You know, I, I think that this defense is good enough. I think they have the speed, I think, to your point. We're going to do it a lot of different ways. We've shown that we can create turnovers. Um, we've shown we can win without creating a ton of turnovers as well. So I think I think um, it's not going to look the same. There's always moving parts, but, um, you know, we've said it. I think, I think that this team is a national championship conversation team and college football playoff contender for sure. Um, let's get a couple more here. Let's go to my guy, Tim Labar, at TLabar1. Uh, Brandon, this is for you. Okay. What kind of neck roll is Curtis Jacobs wearing? <laughs> and, then, and then he went to me and he said, and hack, what kind of poise does it take to take what I was giving you instead of forcing the shot that I was trying to bait you into? So I'll let you go first. That's a good, that's a good uh, question. First question, I have no clue what neck roll he's wearing, but I can guarantee you it is not the old cowboy, whatever it is. Shit yeah. that I had. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I like looks, shit. Your shit was tough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, they pulled that from the back of the freaking equipment shit. I don't think that was even regular at that time. Spider had it hidden back there from like yeah. Egypt, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the old white one that they wore, but <laughs> it definitely served his purpose. Uh, I definitely felt good up there. He looks a lot better with uh, with his than I did mine. I'll say that. Yeah, but, uh, he's he's been stepping. He's been balling, man. Ball. He's been balling. Look out for him to make more big plays. Like I said, all these guys are flying around. It's just it's fun to watch. Yeah. Um, and then to answer your question about the poise and forcing it, you know, Trace touched on it last week. Um, you know, I've had a few games like that. I, I wasn't as patient as Trace. Um, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that that's, that's what this Iowa team's uh, – that's what they do. And fortunately, I, I thought our defense gave us some short fields, gave us some opportunities to kind of – methodically put him in positions to make big plays with in that, you know, you look at those red zone throws, that corner route that he threw where he stopped Tyler after Tyler banged the safety uh, underneath the other out route that uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Keandre ran that, um, but he hit him on kind of a back shoulder and stopped him there. Like an oh, awesome throw. Like that's an NFL yeah. throw um, in terms of, in terms of shaping it. Like most kids are throwing that until the back of the end zone or back pylon. Like Just, yeah. he knew exactly what to do with it. So, um, I thought he creatively made explosives within the within the scheme and within the parameters of what Iowa was giving him. But um, I, I think it's a testament to Drew. I think it's a testament to probably Mike Yersich and a testament to Danny O'Brien and just coaching him in, coaching him that, beating it into his skull, heading into the week. And that's going to bode well, man, because it's not just Iowa, right? I mean, even when you go up against some of these bigger teams like Ohio State and Michigan, like they're going to figure out ways how to take away your number one and force you to get to two mm -hmm. or three reads and – you're just going to have to be patient and make sure you're seeing the big picture and understanding why you're trying to defeat something and where the, where the leverage and matchups are that you can take advantage of. So I think he's only going to continue to grow as his knowledge base grows and the more he studies defenses. And, um, you know, I just thought it was a good job. Would I call it poise? Probably not. I just, I'd, I'd probably call it more just mental patience and um, not getting bored. Just, yeah. just being yeah. able to not be bored with being boring. You know, I thought, <laughs> I thought he did a really good job of that. So, yeah. And I think that's, that's, I mean, you can speak to this and I want you to, it's harder to do when you have a gun too. When you've yeah. got a cannon of an arm, you see that in the league with Josh Allen and really a lot of these quarterbacks. Yeah. They want to take that deep shot, but they want to force it in because they know they can. And 90% of the time, maybe they do. Yeah. But it's that 10% that bites you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, guess that is the, we're going to, yeah, well, no, I mean that that is a problem, but I mean to your point, I think I think that that corner out that I talked about to to, to, to mm. Warren was a great example of that, right? Like he showed off a throw that, you know, there's a handful of guys in the country that can make right. that throw, um, and are confident enough to make that throw, and you know he did it. So there were ways where I think he it, it didn't you didn't 
you wouldn't notice it. Like you wouldn't go out there and be right, like, oh, right. that, was, that was a really risky throw on the surface. But when you actually cut into it, you know, there were some throws that he definitely made that were, you know, those talent took over and God given ability. Right. To over. So, um, you know, re- really excited for the kid. Um, all right, let's go last one, B. I think this one's kind of funny. Well, not funny, but, <laughs> you know, outside of, outside of the, uh, outside of the lines. Um, this is from G money at G-Money. Grant, uh, Grasha, Gracia, Grasha. Um, probably a repeat offender here. I think you might've called him <laughs> out once or twice. Uh, with, with, with the Penn state, with Penn state campus football facilities and downtown area changing so much recently. Mm-hmm. What were some of the changes that you like and some of the changes you dislike? Hmm. I mean, it's tough to say any addition. All the money that they're pouring in is something I don't like. Um, and granted, I'm not on campus experiencing it like a student slash player. So it's mm-hmm. a little different. Uh, but one thing I don't like, let's see. I do not like. I'm trying to think what I don't like. <laughs> Sounds like you don't like. Anything. I mean, I think because of the more buildings they've built, there's less downtown parking. If there's one that maybe That's complaint, I could. <laughs> that sucks, dude. I was trying to get yeah. family clothesline before we were leaving, and I was like whipping around like this is nuts. The yeah. one lot that was behind the den all the time is now a right. Yeah, crazy, <laughs> crazy. But no, nah, it's pretty. I mean, as I said with Dabo Sweeney and kind of the way college football, these college towns are moving. Got to get on that train and invest in keep moving on up with everything. So yeah, yeah it's beautiful to see. It's I'm, I can't imagine being like coming back to Penn state. Maybe I haven't visited since like the nineties or something and coming back now and yeah. seeing what it is. is like crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll echo your sentiment of what I, what I guess I don't like. And then uh, maybe just uh, the loss of some of these bars and like I was never, I could never go to bars when I was on campus because uh, I was not of age. Um, <laughs> I had to come and back. If you did, and if you did, there'd be about two hundred people uh, crowding you, going crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Our, um, <laughs> for you guys out there, I remember at least freshman year hitting campus. You know, all American hack is on the uh, on the squad. I was low key like bodyguard security at the time because he was getting corralled. Yeah, when I first at that point, I knew I never wanted to be that notable of a person because yeah. I can't, I couldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, I tried to, I tried to not. I had your back though. I might have yeah. snatched a few phones. Yeah, snatched a few phones. Unwarranted uh, recordings going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um, we definitely had our fun, but I'd say, I'd say like the Skeller and some of those places that are no longer here, like. Yeah. You miss those spots when I came back. Like those are more of like my vibe, you know, kind of the uh Chrome too. That was my spot. Yeah, yeah. Not not chrome. like uh you know uh, P Man's got its place and champs, like they're sweet, awesome, but I, just kind of those like low key spots you go sit in a corner and, and just have Staples. a couple, have a couple beers with the boys. Um yeah. tough to find those spots now. So I guess that's that's probably what I dislike. So uh G money. Appreciate you taking us out on that note. And, uh, just want to, uh, well, I'll wrap it up with B appreciate it. Dude. Good stuff as always. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're super stoked about this. Want to continue to get engagement from you guys. Mailbag Mondays are going to keep coming. Um, please follow us on, uh, all of our media, all of our social media at state media, PSU at, at B bell at Christian Hackenberg one, you know, where to find us, ask us questions, keep the engagement. We love it. Um, make sure you holler at us on the merch. We want to see you guys in the pocket, uh, in the pocket swag and the pocket gear. When we get back up on campus, I know I'm coming back up for the Michigan game. So it'd be cool to see a couple of those out there. Shoot us some videos, catch up with us. Uh, you know where to find us. Um, and, uh, we'll be back next week. Same place, bringing you guys, uh, great content and, uh, we appreciate it. And from the pocket, this is Christian Hackenberg. Be bell. We'll catch you guys next week.